guys, welcome to Silicon Valley Girl by my wet hair, by the sunshine. You can tell that we're not in California. We're actually in Hawaii right now and we are in our condo that we just got. And honestly, I say condo, but it feels just like a house because it's a two-story place. We have our own entrance and we have a backyard. In this video, I'm going to show you everything. I'm going to share my emotions. Uh, because I see it for the first time. My husband saw it before buying, but I couldn't fly out because I was with the kids. I'm going to show you everything. And in the end, I'm going to show you a spreadsheet of basically how we hope this place is going to perform. Yeah, let's dive right into it. manages our property welcomed me with this fruit basket saying welcome home and as an immigrant this is my first time in the u.s when somebody tells me welcome home and it's not a rented home it's a home that we own Da -da -da -da. so this is basically our condo this is the living room this is master bedroom this is our dining area these are our neighbors it is technically a condo but i really want to call it a house or a townhouse because we have our own entrance and this is our backyard our kids love running around here i love doing my yoga here i say it as if i've been living here for years now but it's only my second day but yes i love doing my yoga and uh, doing some grounding every morning here on this lawn a minute of motivation for all the immigrants out there. Nine years ago when we moved to the US, I could not imagine having my own piece of real estate. Because when I saw all of these people who were sharing, oh, we just bought a house, we just got, bought a condo, I was like, how are you able to make so much money? Because it's hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's almost always over a million of dollars if you're buying somewhere in the Bay Area, in you know Miami area. But then I started talking to smart people like the thing that you should do if you're willing to do something you should start talking to people and asking them right questions and what I realized people just they don't buy a house to have it a lot of people don't even buy a house to live in it because I have a lot of friends who have houses across the US but they actually rent the place where they live permanently because if you want to live in Orange County or you want to live in the Bay Area you end up you know paying a couple of millions of dollars for your house but you owe so much in taxes at the same time so you're better off renting having the same access to the best schools uh, but then your money is working for you in other locations so basically a lot of my friends who do this professionally they have multiple houses and all of those houses are cash flowing for them. And then I realized that in order to start investing, you need to have this down payment. You need to have a good credit history, etc. And it took me nine years to build it. Wow. But once you have it, you start looking for those properties that where mortgage is covered by Airbnb fees that you're charging. And this is where you can scale this up. Of course, there's no guarantee that this property is gonna be the most profitable property in the world. But also as a beginner investor, I don't like approaching properties just from the financial standpoint. Okay, this is cash flowing, let's buy it. Also, because I don't own any homes in the US, I really wanted something that my family will be able to use, something that I could call my vacation home. And right now we're here with another family. They have two kids, we have two kids, and we have a nanny. So the total of nine people are in this condo right now. And it just feels amazing. By the way, the guy who came with us, he's my ex-classmate from St. Petersburg, and we haven't been in touch since we graduated, but his wife watched my YouTube channel and they reached out. And when we met, we realized our kids are the same age and my husband is is now good friends with them and it's it's just a perfect match and you see I really wanted to have a place where you know I could come with my friends where families could stay together the whole concept of this is you know let's make it super family friendly but let's also try to provide a five-star experience and by five-star experience I mean I don't know if you've ever stayed in these fancy luxury hotels they're amazing but if you're traveling with your kids it's just it gets really hard to afford them and it's a lot cheaper to stay in a condo like this where you have your own kitchen where you have your laundry 
but there are certain details that we wanted to have here that would make this a perfect home for us and a perfect temporary home for our Airbnb guests. And those things are, for example, very nice mattresses. I partnered with Nectar for this bed. They send us the bed frame, mattress, all the pillows, and it's just the next level experience when you sleep on those mattresses. And if you ever stayed in hotels like Four Seasons or five plus star hotels, the epiphany of the whole five star experience is actually bedding because you come to a hotel to sleep and those hotels want to make sure you have the best sleep in the world. And this is what we're trying to do here as well. So the mattresses are just amazing. My baby fell asleep on this mattress even before I finished uh, making the bed. So this is something we're really proud of. Another thing, you know, the Espresso coffee machine. I know a lot of uh, local Airbnbs or even hotels, they would just provide the drip coffee machine, which I don't really like because the coffee is really sour. With the Espresso, you just insert the capsule and uh, you have your coffee. We have all of the equipment that you need for the beach, so there's nothing you have to bring. We have beach chairs, towels, all the toys, and I really wanted this place to be kids friendly. So we have anything you can think of. We have cribs, we have carts, we have little stools that they can use, we have toys. Everything that will make your stay a five-star stay. Because I feel like this property is like similar to a four-star hotel, but I really want this to feel like a five-star hotel. And I like that this is all me. For example, this is a gift from our dear friends. They moved from Silicon Valley to Paris, and this is now here. Of course, when you're working with a property, you're thinking of different use cases. And my use case is that I work all the time. So I really need a workstation. And here we go, we have this workstation here. By the way, a lot of this furniture was left from the previous owners but we're replacing it gradually my thesis is let's start renting it out the furniture is nice i can't say anything bad yes it's old it's not the style that i really want but it's working now so we're gonna do the renovation step by step i brought my dyson here it's actually a styler i didn't bring the whole set because it actually touches your hair so you have to disinfect it all the time but I brought the device itself so I can use it here and so that other people can use it here too. I like this hotel-like experience when you have these face cloths, which you can use in different ways. I like to arrange everything in a hotel style. I have minimum cosmetics here because everything else is hidden to create minimalism. And also what I really like, uh, something that we're providing, is a makeup removal towel. Because sometimes you really need a towel to remove makeup. If it's too heavy or maybe you're using oils, this is right here. And all of this, I bought it at Target and we sent it here with um, somebody else who bought an Airbnb in this area. And of course, this is part of amenities for you to remove your makeup. It's the shower. All of this is really high quality, shampoo, conditioner, because nobody likes when you come to a hotel and they provide you with very, very low quality shampoo and conditioners with bad smell or mixed with water or whatever. So this is, this is nice and high quality. This is the closet with anything you can think of. Beach towels, extra towels, extra sheets, toilet paper. We're gonna change this bathtub a little later. For now, it's okay. Ideally, I want to remake our bathroom completely, but again, I think it's not the time right now. I really want this property to be on the market to start working, and then we're gonna decide what's the next renovation on our plan. This is probably my favorite place in the house. This mini balcony with an amazing view of the golf course. We've been here for two days already and it feels just like vacation. And it's a five hour flight from San Francisco, which by American standards is totally fine. Yes, it's a five hour flight, but it still feels like, oh, we're just going uh, to the countryside. That's the feeling that I'm getting because my kids are already used to flying long distance and five hours for them is, you know, it's okay. They watch cartoons, they play, especially if we're traveling with our friends, uh, they just play on the airplane. And because it's still the US, but the climate is just completely different, feels more like Maldives or some tropical destination, you feel recharged right away. You don't have jet lag. You wake up early at 6 a.m. because there is a three hour difference, but it, it doesn't feel like a a jet lag or whatever. And it's just fascinating that now we have a place where we can just 
go and recharge. And it's just amazing that now we have this place where we can just go and chill and have fun. Uh, the only thing is that Emily starts school in August, which means that we'll be able to travel when she has days off. And normally on school breaks, Airbnbs make the most money. So we won't really be able to travel during winter break or spring break, just because we want to this property to cash flow as well. But at the same time, you know, she hasn't started school yet. We still have a few months left. And uh, in those months, we can just come with our friends. When it comes to beaches, there are several beaches around this area. You kind of can bike to them, something that I did, but most of the beaches you drive and it's around 10 to 15 minute drive. There are sandy beaches, there are beaches with small cliffs, there are beaches that are good for snorkeling, there are black sand beaches, there are beaches with turtles. So there are a lot of things going on in terms of nature around this place. You can also take a helicopter and it's like five minute drive from here. And you can take a helicopter to another part of the island to see the volcano, to see the waterfalls. It's an amazing island with a lot of things to do. I'm here in my garage. <laughs> what you can see here are things that we provide for our guests. So this is the cart where you can put all of your kids. We've been four kids here yesterday and you can go to the swimming pool. You can go walk around, maybe go to grab coffee. Very convenient. We have everything for sports. We have table tennis uh, equipment. We have snorkeling equipment. There is more right there. We have floaties for your kids. We have balls. We have golf balls because the golf field is right here. We have some workout stuff, but we're going to have more. We're going to buy yoga mats, etc. Uh, these are the bikes. Helmets for the bikes, locks for the bikes. This is something you can use to take pictures underwater. You spot nice fish, chairs, anything you could think of, or even things you didn't think about when you came here, because we're kind of suggesting things that you can do while you're in Hawaii. And also we have some mattresses and beds here. We're gonna remove them before guests come, just because we were changing some things while we're here, but we already sold them to, to somebody else. They're gonna come pick them up. And of course we have umbrellas here for the beach. This is the garage. Unfortunately, yesterday I had to pause the tour because my daughter Emily started experiencing acute abdominal pain and she developed fever and she didn't feel well. She was really weak. She said she had pain around her navel. So of course I started Googling and it looked like appendicitis. And of course it's Sunday evening and we're on an island and all the urgent cares are closed, but there is a hospital here. So we drove to that hospital. It's a 30 minute drive from where we live. And uh, I was freaking out. She, she was really weak in my arms and she was falling asleep. And then I was like, okay, like, how does healthcare work here? Do we have all the specialists? If it's appendicitis, what kind of surgery can they do here? Is it laparoscopic like in a lot of countries these days or does it have to be an abdominal surgery on a four-year-old? I was freaking out, I was like crazy. So when we came, I also know that sometimes when you go to emergency rooms and there is a huge line, you just wait and wait and wait. But luckily there were almost no people. Uh, they let us in. Two minutes later, the nurse was with us. They had everything. They did blood work. They did IV. Is it IV? The liquids um, so, so that she stays hydrated. They called in the ultrasound specialist. She came from another village. She did the ultrasound. She was the nicest person ever. Couldn't see anything. So we had to do the CT scan. The guy who did the CT scan was the nicest guy ever. He was like, miss, you need to just let her go. and she has to be there by herself but she was freaking out so much she hates hospitals and she's very emotional so they let me stay with her i wore a special robe that protects you from uh, the radiation and they also let me show her cartoons she did a great job so it, we excluded appendicitis. I was freaking out, honestly. They called specialists from the mainland. They analyzed the ultrasound together. They analyzed the CT scan all together. And um, yeah, appendicitis was excluded. So no surgery, thanks God. And um, it was actually an intestinal infection. So we spent around four hours there. They did blood work. So all kinds of tests, urine tests. I'm glad they have it all there. It's the mainly the level of uh, healthcare here is 
almost mainland, I guess, because I don't have a lot of experience with, uh, with emergency rooms, thankfully. And so they gave her an antibiotic and let us go home, which is the best, because they were like, oh, maybe if she throws up or she starts feeling worse, we'll just uh, keep her in the hospital for a night. But she was getting better and the doctor was like, yeah, you can go home. I was so relieved. So we went home. She slept through the night. In the morning, she woke up a different kid. So I guess the antibiotic is working. Uh, she's going to take the antibiotics for the next five days. You know, when we were buying this place, the realtor, the guy who sold us this house told us, you know, it's great that you have American healthcare here. I'm sorry we had to test it during our first stay. But when I was there, I was thinking like, what if we were in Maldives and this happened? The hotel where we go all the time, it's on a remote island and the airplanes, the water plane, the seaplanes only fly there when it's light outside. When it's dark, they don't fly. So I wonder what happens if something like this happens on a Sunday night like it did yesterday and i'm so thankful to the doctors yeah, and i'm i'm glad no surgery was needed full hawaii experience in three days <laughs> oh my goodness of course the highlight of this house is this living room with very rare for the u.s high ceilings and this beautiful window we're planning to put curtains around it and we're still decorating the living room we got new couches we got the tv set the thing is when i started talking to the guy who helped us buy and rent out this house he's like you need to add more things that are associated with hawaii like he said add mural on the wall and draw something like Hawaiian sunset. And I was like, who does that? Everybody loves minimalism. But it turns out people come to these places for a couple days, maybe a week, maybe 10 days, and they really want to immerse in this atmosphere of being on the beach. So we actually got to add a lot of details like that. It's not going to be a minimalist house. It's going to be a house that is decorated for the beach, that gives you the beach vibes so you can immerse yourself into vacation mode right away. walking to the swimming pool this is a first full day in our hawaii condo it's the first time we're ever buying something without seeing it first well i haven't seen it my husband did an inspection but anyways the condo complex is really nice we have a really nice neighbor who's actually living here permanently and he has two cats and he's amazing super friendly uh, we have two swimming pools we have a grill we have trash cans very important and overall the hilton hotel is really close and you can swim with the dolphins at the hilton i biked to the beach today it took me 20 minutes the map shows nine minutes but i did a very intense ballet training the day before yesterday so my legs were hurting so so much so you can actually bike it's bikeable you can also bike to a local plaza to shop there's a starbucks you can bike to hilton they have a cafeteria i see a lot of people walking in the morning and also you can hike to the beach you hike through lava i really want to try that out too in if we have time are nice clean okay let me show you the common area it's by reservation only i don't think we're gonna use it though who uses common area on vacation this is our second bedroom it has king bed this is an extra bed they were sleeping here together but normally it doesn't look like this and there's another bedroom which we also modified for ourselves because emily was afraid of the high bed so we put the mattress on the floor and this is how she slept with her dad and i was sleeping with lily of course we're going to change beds later on 
I'm gonna partner with more companies and we're gonna uh, bring new furniture here and do some collabs, which is kind of cool, doing Airbnb as a creator. We have two full bathrooms and one half bath, which only has a sink and a toilet. Here's the full bath. And of course, we provide the same type of amenities here. The best thing about owning an Airbnb is that you don't have a checkout time. You can stay as long as you want. Our flight is at 1.15, so it's 12 and we're still yeah, here. Bye bye, sweet Hawaii home. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, very five highly recommended, five. guys, highly recommended. back home guys welcome back to silicon valley i just got an amazing gift from a brand it's uh, really great to come back home and get all the gifts um i wanted to talk a little bit about the economics so basically i have this whole spreadsheet here but i don't want to share it completely because it's intellectual property of the broker uh, who created this for me but what we're looking at basically is that if we hope that this property performs like the average of properties that surround it. We're actually looking at a negative cash flow year one and year two. In terms of cash flow, magic starts happening year three. But when we talk about real estate investment, it's not just about cash flow. It is also about two other perks. Perk number two is called cost segregation study, which basically allows you to accelerate depreciation on your STR, short-term rental. And I've talked to a specialist who does that. They actually charge you like 5K to do this cost segregation study, but he looked at the documents and he said the potential write-off is $200,000. And this is basically your write-off from your taxes because you own and operate a short-term rental. Again, please consult with your CPA. I'm not a CPA uh, and I'm not a tax professional, but I met a lot of people who haven't really been paying taxes because they've been buying properties each year. And as you know, the American tax system is written for those who own things, who run businesses. And in my opinion, it's created in a way so that people pour more money into the economy, keep buying, keep investing. So if you actually include cost segregation study benefits in year one, then year one is actually profitable too because you save on taxes. I know a lot of people who have ordinary W-2 income do that a lot because there's no other way for them to reduce their tax base significantly, uh, like in this case. But again, I'm not a tax professional. Talk to your tax professional before doing anything. Number three, this condo is supposed to appreciate. You never know, you know, 2008, but we're hoping that it's going to appreciate. And if it appreciates without the cost segregation study, we're actually cash flow positive year one, because actually it's already appreciated if you look at the market. For example, if we look at the first five years, including appreciation, the average uh, return on investment is 17%. And it only keeps getting better the longer we hold on to this condo. And this all gives me kind of peace of mind. I know a lot of people will comment like, why didn't you buy crypto? Crypto is growing. Of course, you know, in 2024, when crypto is growing, everyone suddenly starts adv advocating for crypto in comments anonymously. <laughs> and then why didn't you buy stocks? The thing is, I think it's all about the balance. I haven't had any real estate in the US before this condo. And now it's, you know, we have some, I have my 1% in crypto and it's given me so much stress in 2022, 2023. So I'm good with 1%. It's actually making me happy this year, but we never know what's going to happen in a month, right? I have my crypto portfolio. By the way, let me know if you want a video separately on how my portfolio is doing. I have my stocks portfolio. This is my real estate, but I feel like the last piece that's missing in this portfolio, the last diversification piece is a piece of real estate somewhere in the Middle East. I'm considering Abu Dhabi when I have enough cash. Abu Dhabi or Saudi Arabia. I feel like that part of the world is developing fast and I see myself doing a lot of things there. We just spent a month in Dubai, the most incredible month. A lot of my colleagues and friends are there now and I feel like this is where the world is headed. You know, the US is this hub for AI. Dubai is this hub for nomads. So that's the next goal, I guess. Uh, and I'm also looking at Boca Raton maybe next year or in two years. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video up to the very end. I hope it was useful for you and I hope it was inspiring. I love everything connected with finance, connected with the spreadsheets. So this all gives me a lot of joy, as you can tell. See you soon and don't forget to subscribe. Bye.